just one more quick thing um back in filezilla now if you didn't want to install wordpress in the root of your domain like i said i'm in the root if you look at the top here it says remote site public underscore html wpvdesaki.com so i'm in the root of that domain but if you wanted to install wordpress in a subdirectory so say you wanted to install in wp video sidekick forward slash blog then you just right click create their directory name the directory blog select ok then you would have opened that folder and then you would have uploaded all the wordpress files from the package into this area okay so i'm actually just going to jump over to my site so while the package is uploading if you go to your the home page of your site you'll probably see something that looks like this index of and so there's nothing there right now and and that's fine that's how it's supposed to look and when wordpress has completed the uploads which it's it's just about finish and it, it will take some time because it is a large package if we go back over so at our site now the all the files for wordpress have been uploaded so if we refresh then you'll see something very different now you just see this message here that says it doesn't seem to be a wp config file and there's a button here that says create a configuration file so you go ahead and select that button and then you come to another page that says you will need the following database name, database username, database password, database host, etc. And to get all of these, what we have to do is go to our cPanel as our hosting account and go ahead and just create a MySQL database. Now, I personally prefer to use the wizard because it just does it in a nice systematic way. So we select MySQL database wizard and this is where we get to really customize the installation so you can just put some random characters there and you want to ensure that you have something like notepad or even a bit of paper to write down you know all the information that we're going to create here so i have notepad ready so i go to the next step then i create a username for that database and then i need to create a password so there is a built-in password generator so you can just use it copy and just click this box that says i have copied this password in a safe place use password and it will just populate the password fields and you want to go ahead and just type password paste it there and then you select create user so passwords do not match so let me just paste them again and then we need to retype this bit at the top create user and then it would just say that the user ha has been created with this password so we are going to copy this information the user name over to our, our notepad file and we also need the database name so we need to copy that over as well so database name so if we go back to our site you see the ask for database name username password database host and the table prefix so if we go back so we copied the database username and the database name and we have a password and this box here that says all privileges we just want to tick it so that we can have all the privileges which we will need to you know create this 
use this database for our WordPress installation. So we just select next step. And we just have a summary of the username, just in case you didn't get to copy it in the last page. You absolutely need to copy this information without the quotation marks. Okay, so if we go back over to our site, then this button at the bottom, we can just select let's go. And you will be taking this screen where you will enter your database name. So we just go back to our notepad file. And, and we have a database name. So the name and user. So we copy all of that over. And then the password goes there. Now for the database host in 99% of cases, this will be the default. You don't have to change this. And But if you enter this and it doesn't work, then you will have to contact your hosting company just to find out what it is that they use as their database hosts but in 99% of the cases this will work and the, the table prefix now you could just add a few letters and numbers just to customize this as well and it's as you see the little note here says it's useful if you want to run multiple WordPress installations so I'm just going to go ahead and select submit and you will just get this message that says okay you made it through this part of the installation WordPress can now communicate with your database and you just run the install and then you just have a few more customizations and some of this will look familiar to you from when we did the installation automatically so you name your site WP video sidekick the username you want to create something unique I usually just use a combination of letters and numbers you know, never use admin and so now we can just go back to our notepad so our WP username we need to just save that and the password and we just need to create something that's strong Try using some common letters and capital letters, and what I'll do is just go back WP password. So if we go and I'm just creating a random password because this is just for demonstration. And if we go back here, and we just paste it in, and the next thing you'd have to do is enter an email so that you can receive updates, and this would be the email that will be used for communication, and the last field that we have here is the privacy field, and you can just leave this ticks up, ticked, allow search engines to index this site. And then you just select install. And then you will just see this screen here that says success, WordPress has been installed, and you've selected a username and of course the password that you've selected. And if you just click the button that says login it will take you to the login page, login to your site, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm just going to go back to the home page of our site, and now you can see that instead of the message that we had there, 
which was pretty much blank. Now we have a site installed with one of the default themes for WordPress and just some default um, default post widgets, etc. So in the next set of videos, I'll take you through exactly how you can customize the site, change the themes, plugins, etc. Okay, so that's how you install WordPress manually through FTP.